Okay, so good day. In this video, we will discuss the reference ellipsoid. So it is expected at the end of this lesson for the students to identify the elements and fundamental parameters of an ellipsoid and also uh, we will show you uh, how to convert or convert your one coordinate system or let's say coordinates of a certain point to another coordinate system okay so we have um, the following contents of this lesson so first we have the earth model when we have the reference ellipsoid and the parameters and also we will add here some examples uh, example okay so we have this earth model so as we all know that geometric geodesy is the branch of science that deals with the size and shape of the earth so the geodetic earth model is used as a reference for the actual surface and external gravity field of the earth so thus um, this mathematical formation of the model should be simple and applicable to closed cal calculations no so which means this um, this model should provide a good fit to the geoid and to the gravity field so so that uh, it allows the linearization of nonlinear geodetic problems so that's why we introduce or they introduce the rotational ellipsoid as a geometrical figure of the earth back in 18th century so ellipsoid or an ellipse no So, um, how does, uh, how do they uh, model this earth model? So, it is by simply fitting its dimension and orientation to the geoid, which approximate this level surface within about plus or 100, I mean plus or minus 100 meters. So as, as you can see here, this is the ellipsoid which is the smooth surface the dashed line and the geoid which is the somehow the irregular shape figure no so that's why we have this um, accuracy or you have these deviations some parts your geoid deviates from the ellipsoid about a certain meter and sometimes your ellip the geoid deviates uh, from the ellipsoid in uh, going down or negatively no so at this part the difference is somehow positive and at this part this is negative with reference to your ellipsoid no if going up that is positive if going down that is negative so that means uh, fitting its dimension to the geoid so since the geoid is a level surface, but somehow its surface is undulating all the time, no, which is undulating, which means like this, no, it's not constant. Uh, the uh, there's a constant shift on its surface, whereas the ellipsoid is the uh, what we call the uh, simplified mathematical figure or device which is used for positioning, okay? So, now we have this oblique spheroid of rotation, meaning to say, from this figure, this dashed line, we rotate this figure to form a ellipsoid or sphere, spheroid, you know? Somehow their, their names are similar to each other. So, about its rotational axis. So here, 
this is a common example of the geoid, the shape of your geoid. Then, as you can see here, there are some parts which is at this uh, on this part, no. So this is um, approximately negative. 80 meters or negative 100 meters meaning to say if this is the ellipsoid the geoid deviates on that part so around this distance no so your ellipsoid and you have your geoid so some parts we have here mean here so this is your ellipsoid your geoid somehow it's like that, okay? Geoid and ellipsoid. So, the geometry of your ellipsoid is an ellipse, right? So, the geometry of the ellipsoid can be described in a simple manner together with ellipsoidal surface, coordinates, and curvature. So, the use of global and local three dimensional ellipsoidal system provides an approximation uh, system of the actual earth and permits the separation between horizontal position and height. So here is the more detailed ellipsoid in 3D perspective. Okay, So you have here your point. So your point can be above or below the surface. So if that's the case, we have your uh, value h, which means the height, okay? The ellipsoidal height. So your ellipsoidal height is from your uh, uh, from your from the surface of the ellipsoid going to the point, which is the projection of this height is normal to the ellipsoid. So when we say normal, if we have this cross section, okay, like this. When we say normal, let's say this is the point. This is the surface of your lips. Okay. Uh, so let's say this one. So we project the point on the ellipsoidal surface, so which is normal at that point. Then, so therefore, this is your ellipsoidal height, h, okay? So the projection of this from point P to point Q, so we project that one, which is normal to, to your ellipsoid. So normal to your ellipsoid. So you, you can see here the uh, the orientation of your ellipse or ellipsoid. So usually the x-axis is coincident with the Greenwich. So this is where our latitude is zero. And of course your z-axis is the rotational axis. Okay, and your y-axis is orthogonal to your x-axis. So this is a right-handed circular, uh, uh, right-handed coordinate system. Okay. Then, so let's move on to the re reference ellipsoid. So again, the rotational ellipsoid is generated by rotating the meridian ellipse about its minor axis. So that is your rotational axis. Then the size and shape of the ellipsoid are described by two uh, geometric parameters. You know? So first we have the, uh, this is your semi major. Axis. The second one is we have semi minor axis. Okay, so this is your A, this is your B. So we're, we're in that A from the origin 
to this point, no? So that is the uh, minor, major axis, semi-major axis of the ellipsoid or ellipse. Then your semi-minor is from the center going to the uh, here. Okay, so that is your semi-minor axis. Okay, so the reference ellipsoid is the preferred reference surface for geodetic computations. And it is the Earth ellipsoid with defined parameters and orientation. Okay, so as, as shown previously uh, on the slides, so it is oriented with respect to uh, Greenwich region and the z-axis is the, it's, is, it is coincidental with the rotational axis and so on. So the terrestrial observations in the geodetic control network need to be reduced to the reference ellipsoid projection from the physical surface to the ellipsoid. So meaning to say, usually uh, we observe our observation on the surface. Then from that, there are some tendencies that your surface is not coincident with the ellipsoid. So that's why there are some reduction happening. So it's very important when we conduct uh, precise uh, observation. Usually we consider the height, the elevation at that point, so that we can precisely, and also together with the geoid model, we can precisely determine the uh, height or elevation at that point. No? So it is generated, the reference ellipsoid is generated by rotating the meridian ellipse about its minor axis. So uh, on the last slide, you already saw what is the output, no? somehow like a, a ball, but there is some flatness about its pole. No. Okay. So it's a mathematically defined surface that approximates the physical shape of the Earth. So what's what's the what's what are the uses for of this defined surface? So first it's a reference surface uh for the determination of horizontal coordinates and geodetic height of points. Second is reference surface to describe the shape of the geoid. Okay, so as shown previously, you have your geoid undulations. So uh, you are, we gave an example about the geoid, the map, the color map. There are some blue spots. So those, uh, those uh, the reference surface is used as the reference to determine the undulations of your geoid. Okay. Then next is we have the reference surface for map projection. Okay. So since we talk about the ellipsoid or ellipse. No, it's also necessary to state the geometric parameters of the reference ellipsoid. So we have the, the six commonly used geometric parameters in the Earth ellipsoid. First, we have semi-major axis from this point going to the center or origin. Okay. Semi-minor from your origin or vice versa from origin or from this point This point So your semi-major a minor or the minor axis is your rotational axis Then we have your flattening So flattening is a measure of the compression of a circle or sphere along a diameter to form an ellipse or an ellipsoid of revolution so by this formula, f is equal to a minus b over b. Then we have the linear eccentricity. It's equals to square root of a squared minus b squared. So that is from the center going to your, let's say, focus. No?
one of the foci of your ellipse. So that is your uh, linear eccentricity. So linear eccentricity, that's the distance. Then we have the first eccentricity by this formula. Okay. So eccentricity is the ratio of the distance between the two foci to the length of the major axis. Okay. And we have your second eccentricity. We have this formula. So the difference is we, the, we use A and we use B. Uh, I mean, yeah, so that's the difference between the two. Okay, so some formulas recommend that second eccentricity, uh, other formulas, uh, the basic formulas or the textbook formulas usually uses the first eccentricity. So either way, uh, it depends on the, your computational accuracy. Uh, as long as you are consistent with the computation, then the end result will not be far to each other if you use first eccentricity or second eccentricity. So here are the uh, common ellipsoid used in geometrical geodesy. So very common for us is we have the world geodetic system, so or WGS84. So used in GPS is uh, GPS. No? Or global positioning system. So we have the geodetic reference system of 1980 and the Clark is period of 1866. So this is common in uh, or this is where the uh, the ellipse ellipsoid used, you no? Know, when they develop the the zone datum. I think that is 1911 and PRS-92. So this is the parameters of this datum mentioned. It's based on here, okay? So these are the defined va variables or parameters. We have A and B, then these are the derived values. So for the GRS-80, So we have A, they have the same semi-major axis, but they differ in flattening, okay? So please take note of that. Then we have your squared eccentricity and their semi-minor axis. So just a slight difference about uh, 0.1 millimeter, okay? So that's the difference between them. So, we have already this, uh, stated the, uh, the parameters and about the ellipsoid. So, so, we have here the definitions of the uh, geodetic coordinate system and the Cartesian coordinate system. So, this is already discussed previously in our previous lesson. So, for latitude, represented by phi here, that is going northward, that is positive, and go, going southward, that is negative latitude. For longitude, from your Greenwich, uh, going east is positive, and from here, Let's use another color. So from here, going westward, that is negative. Okay. So height is in meters. So that is your, since your height is a uh, reference, your ellipsoid, that is your. Uh, Let's say that height.
Okay. Now, so for Okay, so your geodetic coordinate system is defined by angular units. It could be a DMS or degrees, uh, the uh, degree decimal, no? Either way, which is comfortable for you, but usually we express our angular units in degrees, minutes, and seconds. For the Cartesian coordinate, coordinate system, it is defined by it's not angular units, so we need to correct this one by rectangular. Uh, units. No? So by x, y, and z. Can you follow me? So x, y, and z. Okay. So it's uh it's an earth center earth fixed system and it's a right handed uh coordinate system so when i say right handed you, you use your right hand to to portray the uh the right handed coordinate system so which is your thumb that is your z axis or the rotational axis, your index finger, that is your x-axis, and your uh, middle finger, that is your y-axis. So x, y, z coordinates. No, in basic partition plane, x and y uh, provides position, right? In, with respect to our reference or origin. So for this one, we added a third variable, which, which is the Z, or Z, okay? So which is used as its coordinates or coordinate components. So the difference between the two, no? When we say, if I told you, we have a coordinates of X is 1 million 500, Y is equals to... 3 million, then Z is, Z is 5 million. The question is, can you locate this point where it is specifically on the earth or globe or in, with respect to the model? If, if you'll be given this kind of value, Probably you would ask, where is this? You'll be having a hard time, okay, from X, 1 million, from Y, 3 million, from Z, 5 million. So that's, that's the time you can locate the point. However, if you are given the geodetic coordinates, uh, geodetic coordinate system, let's say they will say 10 degrees north, 120 degrees east. So from this pair of values or quantity, you would able to locate it directly on the earth. Let's say, go to your globe or if you have a physical globe or map, if you, I'll give you these coordinates, if you already knew how to read map, you would able to locate this point precisely. Or not precisely, but you would able to locate this point right away comparing you are given this kind of coordinates, right? But anyway, in terms of uses, they are both useful, no? <laughs> Only when, uh, for example, you are given points, you want to locate that one, it's easier to use this value rather than this one. But most global navigation satellite system outputs were derived from uh, these components. No, though this from this component it can be converted to this component or vice versa from the geodetic to uh, uh, geodetic to Cartesian coordinates or rectangular coordinates or rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so. 
Here is the transformation between the geodetic coordinates and the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. So here you are given the, for example, mm, you are given the geodetic coordinates, which is, when I say geodetic, that is the latitude, longitude, and your height. 2, x, y, and z. So if you are given with these three values or quantities from a certain coordinate system, then you can convert into this one. So given that, we have this formula, okay? So I will not I'll, I'll anymore discuss this formula. It's uh, understandable and it's easy to follow. So where n, n is your, what is your n? That is your radius of curvature. Anyway, we will have a separate lecture for this type of radius, but for this, for the purpose of this lesson, so we will use this formula. You know? We will further discuss or explain this in our next lesson. Okay, so this is the formula. Then, once you got the, once you already the data, then you arrange the data, then you try to input the data here, then you will have your answer. Then, however, okay, so like this one, this, let's say point P, this is his latitude. This is, the, this is, okay, so point P is projected to the ellipsoid, normal to the ellipsoid, then it intersects this meridian, so therefore, From Greenwich, which is we use green because it is green. Greenwich, green, green. I think this is I like green. This is this is one. So from Greenwich, which is color green. Okay, then your ellipsoid now. I mean, your la longitude is this one. So this is your longitude. So this is your height with respect to ellipsoid, which is normal to also to your ellipsoid. This is your uh, latitude. Okay. Then we convert this, uh, these parameters, or I mean, these values or this coordinate system to Cartesian. So you have your, this point. So we project this in the plane. So this height is your, what? So, yeah. So this is your, somehow your Z. Right? Because it's parallel to your Z. And this is parallel, parallel to what? To y so this is your y and therefore this one this is your x okay so if you are uh, having a hard time to visualize so keep in mind this is x because it is parallel to the x-axis and this is y the y component or y distance because it is parallel, no, it's only a matter of projecting parallel, parallel line, right? So this is your y, because it's parallel to your y, and from point P to this point, this is the projection, okay, of point, which is along to your z-axis, or I mean parallel to your z-axis, so that's why that is your z component for this point, okay? So the other one, we have another, uh, if you are given, let's say, Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. 2, ge uh, geodetic latitude, your longitude and height. Given that, um, given that, 
you have the Cartesian coordinates. So we have, we need to convert, or how do we convert from to this? So we have this formula, okay? In determining your ultimate latitude, we need to do uh, an iterative or iterations before we get the final latitude. So first, we utilize this formula. So the first, let's say, first, uh, let's say, uh, phi sub one, we use this formula, right? So we use this formula, we already have your initial. The next step, initial. So the next step, we use now this initial value to input your initial latitude here because in this equation, we have both sides of the equation have unknown, which is the latitude. So bef before we proceed to determine this uh, value, we use first the, uh, the, the starter starter equation, no? Let's say start up like in order for us to have an approximate latitude. Keep in mind this is not the final, it's only the initial. So once you have your initial input this value here to this equation, then you will have now your second angle. Now if it happens the second angle differs quite a bit to your previous angle, then you use this angle again to input in this equation. If then you will have now your third latitude. If it happens, the difference between them is, let's say the delta is around 0 0.001 seconds. Therefore, this is your final uh, final latitude. So you don't need anymore to input this value again to this equation because tendency, you will have the same difference or the, 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 the delta will be negligible. Meaning to say, this equation already converge. When we say converge, uh, it already sets, okay? Then for the longitude, we have arc tangent of y over x. So simple formula. And for the height, so we have this formula. Okay? So here are the project, uh, I mean the projections. Okay. So this, this point P is that is your, uh, the radius from the rotational axis to the point A, that is your semi -ma major axis. So here are the projections, cross sections. So if your point is here, let's say point P, this is your z component looking looking above uh, i mean directly to the rotation axis this is your p component given that this is your uh, this is pointing to your greenwich so this is your longitude so that is going east so that is positive longitude and for the x component so we have this one so it's somehow like that. So it's a matter of, I mean, imagining that where the point is, where is the projection. So we need to uh, use our 3D sense or 3D imagination in order for us to okay, understand the conversion, the position, and the location or location of the points. You know? Because most of the time, position of the points are above or below the ellipsoid. Okay. So, okay, so we have here an example. So we will try to convert if we are given the Cartesian coordinates, just this one, 
then we are required to solve for the geodetic coordinates. Okay. So we are asked to use the WGS84 parameters. Okay. So given already here. So let's proceed to solution. Okay. So we can write the parameters. Okay, let's say A is six million three hundred seventy eight thousand and one three and hundred thirty seven meters. Then the Inverse flattening is equals to 298.257.223.563. Okay, so that is your flattening so now what we will do we could uh, we can try to solve for the uh, solve for the latitude first okay so as I said lately we use the initial uh, initial formula okay So initial formula is equals to arc tangent of the quantity z over x squared plus y squared. Then multiply again. With the quantity plus one plus e squared over one plus e squared. Okay. So now I think we need to solve first for the um since we already shown you the equation, so we need to solve first for the uh, I mean squared eccentricity. So I already solved for it. So squared eccentricity is equals to this value. So I already stored the value in my calculator. But you can solve with me at the same time. No. Okay, so that is the square is in three CP. And and for the radius, okay, the radius of curvature so that is equal to A over square root of one minus e squared times sine of the oh all right we cannot solve yet for n okay so okay we cannot solve for n because we need the quantity attitude so we need to solve for this first okay so you can squid uh quite um plenty but that's fine okay so if i try to manip to solve for this one you know, to save space okay so we have okay Okay, so I need to store first the values in my calculator.
So okay, so now we proceed to formula. So that is our tangent. Okay, it's, ah, okay. So we can write here. So z is one million hundred. I mean one million six hundred three thousand three hundred eighty four point forty nine over x squared. Oops, I think will be short with the space. So it is negative three million. 185 276.625 squared plus 5 million 286 squared okay and one plus e squared over one plus e squared. So I will not write the e squared because it's too long, it takes so much space. So now we are initial, so I will try to compute. So now we have the value our first approximation is so 14 degrees 39 minutes 18.66 seconds Now this is our first approximation Okay so now we proceed to determine the next iteration. So we use the second formula, which is okay. So let's say phi sub one. Okay, so phi sub one would be equal to arc tangent z. Over square root of x squared plus y squared times one plus eccentricity squared times uh, times the radius of curvature then sine phi over z so this is the formula so what will i do is i'll just try to answer this value on the calculator okay So keep in mind that the theta that you will be using in this formula is the previous one, which is 
theta initial. Okay. Therefore, the resulting for this, the second iteration is equals to. Okay, so the equals to fourteen degrees, thirty nine minutes, twenty three point twelve seconds. So, so if we proceed this iteration, so the second, uh, the yeah, the second iteration would be equals to again in this iteration we now used the previous computed latitude which is the this one so we will input this value here and make sure you have this variable n remember n is equals to a over square root of 1 minus e squared sine squared uh, Phi. So before we arrive in this value, we use the value n or the radius of curvature. And since we use this value here, this initial value of your latitude, we also use this one to solve your radius of curvature before we get, arrive in this value. So in order for us to compute for this value again, we use now this value to input this value here. Okay, to, to make it clear for you. So you use this value, input it again here, and also you input now again your new fee here. Then the next iteration is equals to 14 degrees, 39 minutes, and... 23.14 seconds. So if you can see the differences from 18 seconds to 23.12 to 23.14. Okay. So if we want to determine the third one, the third iteration, to see if there are no more changes, again, we use this value. So we use again that, that value, okay? So from here, we put it again here. We input the value here and here. Then we arrive with a new um, iteration latitude. So 14 degrees, 39 minutes, 23.14 seconds. So if you can observe the delta uh, in seconds is almost zero. So therefore, your final, I mean, your final answer for the latitude is this one, okay? So we it only took us three iterations to arrive with the uh, the, the the refined latitude. No? So by doing iterations, iterative way, so we obtain this value. Okay. Now we solve for the longitude. So longitude is equals to or we can use the next page. So, so longitude is equals to arc tangent negative one y over x. So, if we try to input the values, that is y, that is five million two hundred eighty six six oh two 
0.027 and over x is negative 3,185,276.625 so your longitude is okay let's check alpha y over alpha x so it's it says that it's negative 58 degrees 55 minutes 48.9 seconds so what does it mean okay so imagine this way um diba okay so if we try to draw a circle so Sorry, it's not a so perfect circle, but it's a circle for me. Okay. So if this is a right-handed system, uh, let's say, uh, okay. Okay. So if this is your positive x, and this is your... Mm. going this direction that is your negative x equal r so remember from this this is your north pole this is your greenwich right so we project an orthogonal line here that is your y-axis or positive y and going that direction negative y so since your y is positive check yeah somewhere somewhere here and your x is negative instead of going this way it's going this way if we project that point it says negative 3 million so somewhere here because the radius is approximately 6 million so approximately approximately along this line in the middle and here maybe is another color okay it's approximately here then the uh, other one is 5 million so almost here for y component and x component so if we try to so somewhere here i mean not exactly on this ellipse but somewhere here no? so therefore if we project a line on the equatorial plane so it form like that so this is your longitude so this is going east or eastward therefore the the this value is this one because we are using a tangent so keep in mind you need to be careful when computing for the longitude okay because the signs will tell you where the location of your i mean the location of your point is no in order for you to determine your longitude if it's eastward or westward so for this one your longitude is equals to uh -huh. that would be equals to you just add 180 degrees to, in order for you to determine this longitude let's say longitude so so that would be equals to 121 degrees 41 minutes 11.1 seconds east so lately you should put, uh, I mean for the latitude yeah we should write it in this way 14 degrees 
um, 39 minutes 23.14 seconds north okay because it's all positive so therefore it's north right because your z is positive so you need to say it's on the northern part hemisphere so that's why it's north okay and for the height okay now we solve for the height h is equals to and x squared plus y squared raised to one half because i forgot the square root so i can write it in that way cosine p plus z sine p minus a squared of 1 minus e squared sine squared v okay okay so i will i will um left this equation or this computation to you until you will arrive with this answer so you should arrive with this answer if not close it should be close enough <laughs> 132.03 meters okay so that's the answer okay so if we only differ about centimeter or millimeter level so I, th I think that's good enough so make sure when you're doing computations it's either you store the values in your calculator or do not round off no much easier if I store the values rather than writing the values here then I mean in terms of computational strategy or process you no know, for that you will just round off your answers on the final part not in between computations okay so summary <laughs> okay so it is recognized in order to locate positions of points on the surface of the earth a reference system is used and defined so which is the ellipsoid so the ellipsoid is a mathematical device which approximates the level surface so let's say our level surface it is your geoid so different parameters are expressed to define certain ellipsoid and published ellipsoid so we have WGS84, GS80, Clark's sphere of 1866. So depending on the location, but most likely the, in geocentric means, we are now utilizing the, I mean, if we are adapting to internationalization, so we are keen to geocentric kind of, so that our position will not only be compatible locally but also globally so we have here spheroid is just similar to ellipsoid no don't be confused with that though spheroid is not a sphere but it's an ellipsoid like that okay and we also discuss how to convert from geodetic coordinate system to cartesian or the the other one coordinate i mean cartesian coordinate to geocentric coordinates Okay, so here are the reference and see you in our next lesson. Ciao.